Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Know your true identity. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. John 1, 11 to 13. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. First Peter 2 verses 9 and 10. I am hearing identity crisis in my spirit. Many of God's children are suffering from an identity crisis. What do I mean? We don't know who we are. We think we do, but our knowledge is thin like, like a wafer. We walk around and say we are Christians, but we do not carry ourselves according to the name. What am I talking about? The two scriptures that we heard at the beginning speak of you in the most assuring manner. The first one says that if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, if the Jesus who created this world has saved you, then you are a child of God. It is right there in black and white, but you don't understand it. In other words, you were not conceived by intercourse between your mother and your father. You were not planned for and expected by your birth parents. You are the product of the grace of God and your identity is not subject to any DNA test. You are not a fact. You are truth, a child of the living God. You are part of the greatest company on earth. Let me say that again. There is no royal family in Europe, the Far East, Africa, anywhere on planet earth that has greater status than the supernatural company that you are a part of. Listen to me carefully. Let us just consider one phrase from the Peter passage. You are a chosen generation. Do you understand what it is to be chosen? and chosen by God. It speaks to what you were before and what you are now. And the difference in your status is that in your former status, you lived in darkness, but now you live in God's wonderful light. And what made the difference? You must be curious and ask God, why did you choose me? God will gladly say that once you were not a people, but now you are his people. And he showed you mercy in your former state and brought you into light and speaks over you that I love you and I am proud of you. I want the world to know who you are. My friend, the world might know what you were before. That sinful person who used to be known for immorality and evil. The sins you used to do are too shameful to be mentioned in polite company. Your former identity was nothing that would allow you through the door of certain organizations. You were bad, really bad. That is the person the world knows. But Jesus is presenting to the world a brand new person because you were chosen. I don't know if you're catching the fever of this message because my heart is just bursting with the revelation of who I am. I am a child of God. I am God's chosen possession and all of that because of his grace and mercy all because this great God loves me. 
let me cool it down a bit. Uh, let, let, let me cool it down a bit. Let us look at somebody who represents us. The story of the prodigal son. That story is found in Luke 15, 11 to 32. This young man lived in comfort and absolute wealth. He did not work. His father made big money from his business. This young man, one of two boys, had a great life and an even greater future. He had wealth now and he had wealth stored up for him, but he did not understand what all of that meant. So, he asked for his share of the inheritance. In other words, on the day when he asked his father for his share, there was $40 million, for example, set aside for him and his brother. Give me my $20 million now. I will not wait. And with that, he left home in search of pleasure. But something big was awaiting him. He had the pleasure all right. In today's world, he would be sailing the high seas on an expensive yacht with lots of friends, the best of food and wine, 24 hours a day party. They would sail into one port after another, and each time they would stop and they party at the best nightclub, spend the night at top hotels in expensive suites. He was having the time of his life. Meanwhile, the money was running out until one day his credit card was declined. He had never known that kind of experience before. There was no money. He lost the yacht. The friends left him. He lost everything. For the first time in his life, this young man had to get a job feeding pigs. One day, he had a come to Jesus moment. He came to his senses and decided to swallow his foolish pride and go back home. But listen to what he planned to say to his father when he arrived home, all dejected and tattered. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. True. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. What? Says who? Who told you that you are not worthy to be called my son? Who spoke that lie into your system? Who told you such nonsense? What did he, what he did not expect was compassion born of love, compassion that never stopped loving him as the son of this rich man. Dad showed him grace and mercy got him cleaned up and threw a big welcome party. He came home to be a servant, my friend. Dad welcomed him home as a son. That young man, for all his life, lived in an identity crisis, did not really know who he was. Yes, he knew that this rich man was his dad. Yes, he got his share of the money and went and he wasted it. Yes, he came to his senses, but listen to the nonsense that came out of his mind. I want to be your servant. And his father said, no, a thousand times no, you are my son. His quest for an identity crisis came to an end when his father said to him, you are my son. His dad hugged a tattered and dejected young man and said to him, welcome home, my son. That's what you and I heard the day when Jesus came into our lives. And that day we stepped into our new identity. That day when you came back home to Jesus was the beginning of your real identity as a child of God, chosen by God and counted among the best of the best. My friend, stop living 
in the identity of a servant and start living in the identity of a child of God. Your father who is in heaven reigns supreme over all this world. He owns everything. There is no one like your father. He is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. You need to wake up today and realize who you are. What is your real identity? You were chosen from the lowest and made to be seated in heavenly places. You are royalty, my friend. Your real identity says you are chosen by God and you are a child of God. When you know who you are, when you know whose you are, that is the moment you will realize your real identity, that you are a son of God.